Great to have you here, Carlos. Good to meet you. Also with us today is Tomas Yu, who is chairman of the World Mixed Martial Arts Council. Tomas, thanks for joining us Good here. Good morning. Thank cat. you for having us here. I'm going to find out what the World Mixed Martial Arts Council is Thanks. here in a moment. Aaron, I know you've been wanting to talk to Carlos, and here he is. Well, it's so funny, as they mentioned yesterday, oh, you know Carlos Conant's going to be on the show today, or tomorrow. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a pleasure to have you on our show, so thank you Yeah, so absolutely. Much. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, I know I had to take some coffee to get you here, here but you know, <laughs> do what we have to do. Free coffee will do the trick anytime. <laughs> So tell us a little bit, how did you get into fighting? I know you started training when you were 15. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I, I became a fan when I was pretty young, like nine, nine years old. I was wrestling, and that's around the time that mixed martial arts and UFC really kind of came into the, the public's awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, at 15, I found Jackson's Mixed Martial Arts and their affiliates with Tom Bond and, and Arlene and uh, started, started training. And, you know, kind of the rest is history, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> now, um, this, this, and you're going to tell me now, Tomas, how this all works. You're, you're kind of one of the governing councils of this sport, is that it? Yes, I'm actually the chairman of the World MMAC, the World MMA Council. Uh -huh. uh, the World MMA Council is a world sanctioning body that regulates uh, world title bouts. As I watch this, Carlos, I, I'm looking at it, uh, and I'm a sports fan. Mm -hmm. I'm watching you guys do this. What, is there anything that's against the rules? <laughs> um, yeah, there, there's there's Tell rules me. in place for safety. Sure. Um, you know, there's no eye gouging, no hair pulling, uh, no striking to the back of the head of a, an opponent. Um, certain elbows are illegal. Um, you know, it's it's actually a very safe sport. It's as rough as it looks and yeah. it, as intense as it looks, um, you know, the injuries and uh, you know serious serious stuff is is pretty uh, pretty uh, um, un unheard of in the sport actually. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting because mm -hmm. it looks like you get hurt every time you do this. It's you, a rough you, sport. Yeah. <laughs> you get hurt <laughs> yeah, quite a bit, but as far as serious injuries, not not as much, not as right. much as you think, anyway. Not as bad as a football player or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and, and there, there's a potential for for that, of course, but you know, statistically, it is it's it's a fairly safe sport. Yeah. What what drives the appeal of this? What do you think it is? And you can both answer that question. Um, I I really feel like it has something for everybody. You know, you're putting. Uh, Elite athletes together, um, your uh, you know dynamic styles, um, you know wrestling, kickboxing, boxing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know it, it's exciting. You know there you you never know how a fight's going to go. You know you, you could have a stand up battle, you could have a, a grappling match, you could you know have a have an exciting fight that's really dynamic all over the place. Um, you know I I think that you know this is this there's a reason why this sport is is growing so fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know there's I I feel like there's people. Who who don't who don't get it yet, and then there's there's yeah. MMA fans because I really yeah. feel like there's mm -hmm. mo most people who are, are going to come around. Yeah, and uh, Tomas, uh, also, what are your feelings with it? Yeah, uh, the I mean, it's uh, become like a world yeah, sport now. It, it has actually. Um, we have a, a series of trips planned out for the rest of the year, and we're going to be spending two weeks in in India, two weeks in Thailand, wow. precisely because there's so many fans out there. Uh, there's promoting companies calling us to make sure that it can be um, in line for for world title bouts, right? They're trying to get fighters over there, right, and create bigger bouts, uh, world world known. Mm -hmm. Now, the the aggression that people think the the unsafety, you know, as a parent, I would say like, wow, that is so dramatic. I yeah. don't want my kids <laughs> training, but but like Carlos said, it it is it is highly watched out for mm -hmm. uh that's bodies like us exist to make sure there is regulations and and, and yeah. fighter safety um it's funny because it, it is more more thrilling to watch than boxing nowadays mm -hmm. right um i'm a big fan of boxing as well uh -huh. right but you know it it it, it some, on Saturday said, so, "Well, you're gonna watch the fight. I'm like, which one am I gonna watch? Is yeah. it M uh -huh. MMA or boxing?" Uh, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, I, I, I love talking to elite athletes, and I consider you one. Um, when you're in the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. do you sense the crowd around you, or are you just zoned in on your opponent and what you have to do personally? How, what's going on with you in that moment? Um, I, I think there's some some conscious awareness of the the crowd of your what your coaches are saying but um, a lot of these things are are trained the the techniques are trained so much it's really muscle memory and, and instinct so you know I, I i your mind is going but you are supremely focused on you know the guy across the cage from you who's trying to uh you know end your night basically yeah <laughs> 
Well, it's like before you go out there, it's like you get all you have to get all revved up, and it's like you put on this whole new role. Mm -hmm. It's a whole other person. Yeah, Very absolutely. It, I, I would say eighty percent of it's it's psychological. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, getting into a good mind state, you know, you're you're about to go do battle. So you yeah, you gotta you gotta put on uh, you gotta put on the game face and get ready. Uh, you've become very well known. With that comes some of the charitable things that come your way, and you're involved in a, a, a very good charity, and, I, and you're supporting uh, Cuidando uh, de los Niños. Fill us in on that a little bit, either one of you. Um, all right, Cuidando de los Niños is an organization here in town that um, provides support to uh, homeless children. Yes. Um, it's, uh, they, they have a, a, a daycare center. It's an early childhood development center. Um, and they do, you know, pretty much what any preschool would do for, for, for children, you know, mm -hmm. so get them started off right with education, um, but they also do things uh, like provide nutrition, health care, uh, dental, um, kids need glasses, shoes, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, you know, they do, they do amazing work over there. And on the back end, they try to help the parents of, uh, you know, the, the homeless parents um, get jobs and, and get, into, get into housing. So they're really hitting the homeless problem from, from two different sides. Yeah. And you have an event coming up, Fight Night, October 3rd. Tell us what that's going to be about. I'll, I'll let Tom. Um, the, the, the Fight Night uh, Gala Series is a series of six uh, events, um, the first one to be here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm -hmm. right? And it's intended to, to work with local promotion companies and also to uh, partner up with a, a nonprofit organization to raise funds, raise awareness. Um, when it comes to philanthropy, sometimes people think that we need to go you know, uh, across the world to, to go do work, you know, it's just opening our eyes, opening the backyard and looking that we do have a need here in, in town. Mm -hmm. And what better yet to, to help, you know, kids uh, have a five-year-old daughter and, and I can't imagine a, a kid out there not having the basic principles that we take for granted every day. Uh, going back to the, to the galas, um, uh, the, the gala is, is coming uh, late this fall, yeah. right, for, for schedules and, and for dates and locations of the future galas. Um, we know we have some in Colombia, we have some in, in, in Mexico coming up. Uh, they're, all of them are going to be on our webpage, uh, the schedules and times and how to be a part of it. They're targeted for the business community, right, to raise funds, to raise awareness for, for those local nonprofits. Now, there's something to do with that motorcycle. What, what's going on with that? Okay, a um, few fights ago, I, I, I won a Harley. Harley um, is, is a big sponsor of the UFC, uh -huh. and uh, I, I won my fight. I got this really, really nice Harley. Um, I figured I, I could do something better with it than, than keep it for myself. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing a raffle. Um, it's going to be a nationwide raffle. Um, we're kind of getting all the logistics in place right now. Um, and uh, we're going to be selling raffle tickets for $25 a piece. Um, five, five for 100, a little bit of a deal there. Wow. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, basically um, you get this brand new uh, Softail Slim Harley if, if you happen to win it. We're going to have a couple of um, you know, second, third prize. This is the grand prize. Um, the, the website you can go to to, ch to check this out is campcondit.com. We'll have a link to the, um, uh, to the, to the raffle so nice. you can do tickets online. And, you know, hopefully we can raise quite a bit of money for uh, Cuidado Los Niños. Great stuff. Great so stuff. you could own this. Can I see that real quick? Absolutely. So you could own this motorcycle for possibly only like $25. <laughs> That's Isn't a that great amazing? deal. Yeah, yeah, and we decided to do a raffle as opposed to an auction just so that we could get more people involved. Um, you know, not, not a whole lot of people can outright, you know, buy, buy, buy something like that cash, but, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people can, can afford a $25 raf raffle ticket. And in turn, we get a lot of, uh, um, a lot of exposure and a lot of people aware of what Qdano does. Yeah, and I love that this is a national event and you're helping your community. Love it. Oh. Love it. Awesome. Go back to MMA for a sec. I want to talk more about that. All right. <laughs> all right. And now, now, looking at you, you're, you're not a, you don't look like, I, I kind of expected more like a football linebacker physique, mm -hmm. but you're very lean and you're very, um, is, is that what the training calls for or does it call for a guy to be bulked up and big? Well, see, there, there's all different body types in the yeah. sport, and so we have to make weight classes. Yeah. Uh, we, we have to make a... a, a and what a, do you weigh? Um, I, I fight at 170 pounds, which is welterweight. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, and, and there's different body types within the weight class. There's short, stocky guys that you would, you know, maybe yeah. that, like the, the body type you're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. There, there's taller, lanky guys, and each body type kind of lends itself to a, a different style and different mm -hmm. techniques. I see. There's different advantages for a short guy as opposed to a, a lanky guy like myself. Hmm.